today I'm going to give a review on my 2008 CBR 1000RR Fireblade. Uh, so I've done a lot of work on, on this bike. I bought the bike when the engine was seized. I knew it was seized. I got it for a very cheap price. I put an engine in um, and uh, mostly what I'm going to talk about this bike is negative. So reviewing all the things and I've got a lot of negative things I don't like about this bike but in the end I'm gonna tell you why uh, I, I want to keep this I would still keep this bike uh, because like I could flip this bike very easy I could sell it uh, I tested putting it on um, Facebook for sale or just as a just as a test I put it for the exact amount of price like you know how much I bought it plus the engine and I was overwhelmed like in the first hour I was just overwhelmed by messages uh, so so I could sell this bike very very easily um, even make a profit but I'll tell you why I'm not going to sell it at the end so welcome to my channel where we talk about bikes and Bible verses and hopefully you can watch the video until the end uh, when and as usual share a Bible verse the first thing I want to talk about this bike is the noises this bike has got this bike is known for um, what they call the supercharger noise maybe I'll try and capture it in the video but uh, there's this distinct you know noise that comes from the bike and it sounds like a supercharger and that is because uh, what can happen is the it's got a known issue where crankshaft main driver can deform a bit it's a known issue it's when you uh, do like wheelies when you like you can give it the full torque of this bike but you can't give it more right and that deforms the uh, primary gear on the crankshaft and then it makes this noise it could get really Honda say that it you know won't affect performance and it won't affect um, reliability and they back in the day they did like a free recall if you had that problem um, it wasn't a recall it was just an extended warranty and they would fix it if, if you had that problem <clears throat> but that's one of the noises so um, the way you got to think of it is it can handle the full torque that this bike has and it won't deform but it can't handle more that means like abrupt wheelies you know wheelies abruptness launches like drag launches it can't handle it it would deform so yeah just one thing the other thing is the chatter it's a very very chattery engine you know people have problems with chain tensioners people say that the chatter is from the uh, deformed uh, primary drive and I've also like even when pushing the bike around it's got a funny noise I don't know it's like a chain or maybe the bearing is gone like maybe the the rear one of the rear bearings are not good uh, and you can hear it sounds like a bit of a helicopter noise on the low rpm so there's a lot of noises on this bike the other problem with this bike common problem is engine uh, engine problems so what, and what I consider major, major engine problems. You know, a lot of people complain, you got the tensioner, people pull manual tensioners in and they blow, up, blow things up even worse, right? Um, <clears throat> you got that crankshaft problem, which uh, they said that was a problem in manufacturing. Some, some uh, air bubbles got into the, you know, when they, when they were manufacturing the the cast um, oil burning right now this bike is is a low friction bike there's not enough there's not as many like piston rings as other bikes or other engines have right and people have said and people have warned, warned me that this bike can use as much as one liter per 1000 kilometers right that's uh, uh, how much six, is that 600 miles around 600 miles right one liter of oil 
the whole thing only takes three liters, right? One liter. It can say up to, and then Honda thinks that that's not an issue. So I don't know if my bike actually has it. Like not all bikes wasted that much oil. Um, like maybe some more or less. But like the way the way I see it is like the way I see it is as a manufacturer of a super sport bike you got one job and that job is to make an engine like how can you mess it up that bad like the tensioner the crankshaft the the oil burning you know the rings like how can you mess it up that bad that you had one job really like my um my cousin he bought a brand new uh, this was a while back he bought a brand new bmw s1000 double r right they told him they go the bike here in australia was twenty five thousand dollars they told him they go if you blow the engine it's going to cost you twenty four thousand dollars to fix right like when you when you're buying a motorbike essentially you're buying the engine that's that's what the manufacturers do they make engines right and then they just put the other bits around um, to make the rest of the bike and they, or they buy off the shelf like you had one job to make an engine and you messed it up that bad like how can a bike have that many problems although having said that um i don't know why like a lot of people say it's still reliable um if you look at the most unreliable bikes this is not in the list so i don't know maybe because of the recalls extended warranty or maybe people are just over uh, reacting and it's not that big of a deal um so <clears throat> we'll see I'll, I'll keep driving this bike and i'll see how much actual oil consumption but the low friction with the less piston rings um actually makes the bike rev up really quick like like it does rev up really quick um you know so it's like a quick revving low friction bike <clears throat> the third thing i want to talk about is a comfort this bike is not as comfortable as my r1 now i ride sport bikes all the time um so this one is a little less comfortable so a little bit more squashed but what i actually want to talk about here is this misconception that really really just annoys me when people talk up say that all sport bikes are uncomfortable right all sport bikes you know you gotta use your core muscles or makes you sore right that is people who are just they don't think and they don't try and they just follow the sheep and they follow something that probably sounds right but it's not all right i went like i went and i, I bought um a triumph street triple because it's upright i wanted to see what upright bikes were like i went and i bought one right and I, I don't know, I don't know what you mean by it. So what do you mean? Tell me then, explain me. It's more, you know, they're more comfortable. I get in one hour, I get a sore butt on my Triumph. I don't get a sore butt on this bike. I can ride this bike for longer than an hour before I start to get sore. Or any sport bikes, right? Oh, sport bikes, they're so uncomfortable. Bikes are like, oh, you know, your core muscles, yeah, they're gonna be on an upright bike like my triumph not only does my butt hurt in less than an hour but because you're upright if there's jolts it hits your discs in your back right it hits the discs in your back on a on a bike like this you're hunched over there's less impact on your on your discs right did you think of did you consider that or and um, because you're more hunched over you're distributing your weight to keep you up on your legs your butt and your hands and people say oh, oh you get sore wrists yeah you're not meant to put actually um the, you're not meant to put that much pressure on your wrists anyway and you can shift your body weight around i can ride this longer before i start to get sore than i can on my the, um street trip which is an upright bike right i can ride this one longer probably go one and a half hours before i start to feel sore right people are like oh you can't ride it for two hours all right let's let's just let's just keep people honest here right 
You can't ride it for two hours before you can't do All right, how long can you sit in a car for? Can you sit in a car for two hours without getting sore? Like just, just people, they just follow, follow the sheep. You know, that someone says something to kind of make sense. And the, you know, for me, sport bikes are more comfortable. I can ride them for longer. I can ride them for longer. I can shift my weight. I can move up, down, you know, move my butt back, forward. I, like, I can't, you can't do that. You got a single point of contact on an upright bike and that's your butt. You can't take the pressure off on your wrist. You can on a sport bike for a bit if you want. You can shift around. How is an upright bike more comfortable? Now, to be fair, I will tell you how an upright bike is more comfortable. And that is at really, at, at either not moving or, you know, really slow speeds like below um, five kilometers an hour, like three miles, right? That, yes, I will give it to you. If you are someone who, you know, 80, 90% of the, how you drive is just doing tight weaves in between cars and things like that, yes, yes. 100% go for the upright go for the you know triumph uh, street triple or any any other upright non-sport bike but for me yeah i've got to put up with this the the awkwardness of the slow maneuver but uh after that once i get going past five kilometers an hour uh, it's 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 more comfortable than an upright bike the next thing i want to talk about is the braking i don't i don't get it these Tokiko brakes I don't get why I always have problems the brakes on this bike is not good right I get a bit of bite in the beginning and then afterwards nothing like it just the brakes are really crap now you could say yes these brakes are worn um, you know the pads are worn the pads are old the discs are, the rotors are worn yes they are but why do I always have problems with Tokiko brakes? See, my ZX6R always had a problem. I put new rotors. Okay, it improved it a bit. But, see, my R1, that had really bad brakes. Like, that had really worn old brakes on it. But they were still better. Even when they're worn, they're still better. Right? And then I, I, I updated them and my brakes were fine. They were perfect. But on these ones... So I had th these Takikos on my ZX6R, the 2006 model one, the 636, and on this bike, I always have problems. My brakes are not good. I don't have good braking power, right? Power-wise, how how fast is it? Well, on on a spec sheet, um, this is not as powerful as my R1, but from writing it and actually even looking at the spec sheet um, this has more usable power so like this has more torque the stroke of the engine is longer right than my R1 my R1 has a, a slightly higher peak power but this bike has got more torque throughout the whole range so so this bike for the way I ride it is, is more fast than my R1 and um, I don't use peak power like I never I use I like the characteristics of a leader bike um, I mean I'm happy with the 600 as well but I just I don't know I just happen to have a leader bike I wouldn't mind uh, a leader or a 600 um, because you know for the speeds that I ride like you know I don't I don't need that much peak power so overall like I've said a lot of negative stuff about this bike um, but like I said I could sell this bike very easily but I'm choosing not to there is something about this bike there's something about this bike that I, I can't put my finger on it why I like it I've said a lot of negative things it's hard for me like I, I can't sort of think off the top of my head the positive things but there is just something about it. There's something about the way it feels. Maybe maybe it's the problems. Maybe I like all the problems that it has. It gives me a bit of character, you know? Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, looks, it looks good. I mean, my R1 looked good too. So I'm just comparing with my 2008 R1. That looked good. But, yeah, I, I can't... 
like I said, I put it for sale. I put it for sale just to test it out, and I got all. And this bike is more popular. It's more like when I tell people I've got a fire blade, like I get a lot more reactions from people. I get a lot more like I don't know. Um, and pe people love to um, turn these into like drag bikes and stuff. Like I, I met two people when I was selling like the old engine for parts. Um, they you know turbocharge the bike um, and they use it like they get the long swing arm and stuff. And um, I don't know. It's just popular. Like people people get more reaction to this bike I get more reaction than when I talk about my R1 some people, I mean, some people are like die hard you know fans of R1s but a lot more people in general just like this Fireblade uh, it's a popular bike uh, and I like it I, I don't know like I said I don't know what it is but I, I'm not gonna sell it I like the way uh, uh, something about it that just makes me want to keep it and uh, the Bible verse for today is from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 and it says be kind and compassionate to one another and forgive one another just like Christ has forgiven you now Jesus had some very extreme views on forgiveness and, and on a lot of things um, but you can see a lot of his extremeness in forgiveness in, in how much you had to forgive you know other religions there's a limit there's you know sort of forgive to the level of someone else forgives you and uh, but Jesus is really I think the only one the only like religion that has that such an extreme view on love on forgiveness um, on just you know putting yourself out there to, to help others um, and even if you're not a Christian, even if you're not a believer, <coughs> like, you know, you don't have to believe in Jesus, but it still applies. Like, forgive others because you're not perfect. Like, you, you, you'd mess up one day too. And you'd want someone to forgive you when you do mess up. It's almost like Jesus knew how people work. You know, how people tick. So... Um, I think, I know it's, it's hard, but it's one of those things like, just be kind and compassionate. Have compassion. Like, have, have mercy and compassion, even though someone has done wrong. Um, and like, I think that's, you know, we're here on this earth, earth is hard. People hurt you, people do the wrong thing, and Jesus says, well, yeah, it hurts, but the formula to survive in this life is to forgive, because you're going to mess up too. And Jesus came to forgive anyone who asks him for forgiveness, and Jesus will wipe away anything, like if you repent, if you turn from your sins, right, if you turn, if you um, confess to God, and tell God what you've done wrong and ask him to forgive you Jesus will forgive you and he'll wipe the wrongs clean that's why he came and he suffered and he died and he bled and 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 he did that for forgiveness that was the reason for why he did it so anyway uh, if you like this video please don't forget to please hit the like button uh, if you like my content in general please subscribe um, make a comment you know tell me what you think about this bike uh, if you like it if you don't like it and uh, take it easy and ride safe